So the way I see it, I've got three main focuses. One is the immigrants' rights issues. Uh, the second one is, uh, I've, I've always been a passionate and dedicated environmentalist. Most of my work has been in the, um, has been the environmental sector. I'm currently working in a marine environmental NGO based in Brussels. Uh, before that I was with Greenpeace and I've been involved with the Green Party in Europe and Ireland as well. I, uh, the, the main reason being because I, I, I really think that we need to be doing a lot more we need to be taking environmental cri the environmental crisis considerably more seriously. And that's not just climate change, but obviously that is the most pressing one. So if elected, I, that I would make climate change a chief focus for my work, but also threats to biodiversity, forestry issues, uh, the nature of Irish agriculture, fisheries. I mean, uh, the environment is everything, so it is a large area, but I mean, it, it's something that I think is woefully underrepresented in the, in the, in the Irish Arctis at the moment. Um, I also am very interested in European affairs, that's my academic background and obviously being in Brussels I have uh, a lot of experience working with the institutions. That's another thing that I think we only ever talk about when it comes to treaty times and I just don't think that that's working for the Irish population. I think we're, we're keen and enthusiastic Europeans, we're seeing the consequences of not discussing European issues and European legislation on a daily basis with the upcoming Brexit. Um, vote in, in the UK, which obviously I think would be very damaging for Ireland, but it's also damaging for democracy just for these issues to be discussed just around yes-no referendums. I think they need to be uh, on the agenda much more regularly. If elected to Shannon Aaron, I would be seeking to get onto the Joint Iraqis Committee on European Affairs and to bring an informed position on that and someone who's not going to view it just purely through a national lens, but also think about uh, as as you know as we as enthusiastic members of the European Union, how we can make the European Union a better and more functional institution. Um, yeah, the, the marriage referendum campaign was one close to my heart. Um, I came home and campaigned a little bit on that one, as, on that issue as well. Uh, I had some experience with European referendums previously, but um, the marriage referendum one is, is, is one, as a gay man, it's, it was very important to me especially. Um, a lot of my friends, my friends were involved in setting up the Vote With Us campaign. So I submitted a vote from Brussels, um, a video, a little video blog. Um, it was a very positive campaign, and it was nice to have, it was it was very good to be in, to be involved with. It was a real I felt a real turning moment in Irish history because um, certainly in Brussels a lot of people were watching, and they still have very outdated notions of Catholic Ireland and and so on. And this really the sixty two percent majority for yes that really helped to to, to 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 slay that finally. So that was that was a very positive experience. Um, in general, it was it was the, also the easiest political campaign I've ever been on. I, I admit I'm in Dublin Bay South, where I, I grew up, so um, I was canvassing on the canals, and it was just yes, 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 yes. Uh, in the end, I just gave up, and I just asked people to bring their ID with them to make sure they didn't forget their ID, so that they could they could vote yes. So it was an easier one than the other campaigns that I've been involved in. So just very positive in general. Uh, I, do, I, I was at the Facebook debate recently, the Network 2, uh, the RT2 um, Facebook debate, um, where the issue came up as well. Um, and I do, uh, the, 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 the dual, dual problem of, um, of increasing fees and declining, uh, well, declining relative standards, um, and it does seem that we, we are facing into serious issues in regards to, um, we, have the, we have this, the, this real problem of people don't want to pay fees and increase fees, and that's understandable because the the, the, the bills are, are considerable at the moment. But we are also facing in, in increased demand on, on third level education, and we need to we need to work out a way to to make sure that that can be funded. My preference is um, that people who can afford to pay, especially at the very upper upper levels, should be should be making some sort of contribution. But in principle, but generally, third level should be paid through through general taxation, and we need a stable tax base. Uh, to, to be able to, to do that. So um, that, that's where I'd be focused. Realistically, as a member of Shannon Aaron, it's going to, uh, my abilities to influence educational policy of the government are going to be limited, so I'm not going to overpromise on anything here. I, and I've noticed also that there's a lot of other candidates, fine candidates in the race, who are making education their priority. Um, and um, they've got some very interesting things to say about it, and I'd be interested in working with them if they were also successful. But in general, um, I, I believe in, a, in a, a broad tax base, I believe in a stable tax base, and I believe in, in significant investment into third level education from, from the from the revenues. That's an interesting one. Um, well, I think that there's a lot of us abroad. I mean, and I'm, and I'm encountering this uh, as, as the campaign really kicks off. Um, I've been engaging with people and uh, particularly groups, um, registered groups and uh, TCD alumni groups that I'm, I'm getting in touch with. To uh, that, there's a lot of us abroad. That some people, some uh, many of us do feel disenfranchised, especially in the short term, by uh, by 
the extremely restrictive um, voter registration laws here after 18 months when you've vote, but in practice, of course, without a post to vote, the, the moment you hop on the plane, your vote is just gone. So, um, we, so uh, yes, I mean, obviously, I do think this is an issue primarily. I do think that, that um, uh, graduate students do seem to be more likely to be emigrating. Some, some having a you know fantastic experience like myself, and it's and it's been very positive. But um, I think that we should be encouraged to stay involved in in Ireland. And I think that that's a, that's considerably easier now than it used to be. We've got the Journal.ie, Broadsheet.ie, uh, Generation Emigration, and Irish Times, and all the other available resources to stay up to date on, on what's going on in Ireland. And um, me and my Irish friends in Brussels, we are we are all do that on a daily basis. We still follow Irish politics, still follow Irish society, are still regularly engaged. And we need to recognise that emigration and uh, has changed. That it's no longer people um, going abroad to work for 25 years. It's now you can go abroad for three years and you can come back. And we need to be encouraging that. And I think that we need to be encouraging, particularly Trinity graduates, who are obviously the finest graduates in Ireland, to uh, to make sure that they come home um, after after their time abroad. Oh, that's a good question. Uh, I was uh, I was a, I did history. I read history in Trinity. So um, I got. I was not into politics, to be honest. I didn't really know anything about politics when I started in Trinity. I knew I went and I just sort of joined up with every every left wing um, group, um, including the Greens, uh, but I never got particularly involved. Um, I remember my first Greens meeting. I went with a friend, and uh, he ended up um, he ended up dating somebody who was in the group. So I felt like the third wheel, and I just dropped off. It wasn't actually until later that I got involved uh, during my masters that I got involved in the Greens. So um, the I was I was a bit of everything, and I, I was a history nerd for sure. Um, not so disciplined on getting my essays in on time or, or anything, but uh, but I'm still very passionately into into history. And um, again, the environment that was my key thing. I've um, just been really, really obsessed ever since I was you know, seven years old watching David Attenborough. I've just it's just been my my, my central interest. So I was I was involved in some of the the green aspects of. of university as well and also I suppose I was coming out when I was in college at the start and that did that was a that was a real really important moment for me the first year of college really was the year where I met my first boyfriend and it was a it was an important and um, it was really you know a time of growth from that point of view so and also making some of my best friends most of whom I'm, I'm still I'm still in touch with daily they're living some of them are living in New York some of them are in London some of them are still in Dublin but um, making best friends I think is, it was another key focus for me too.